Okay, what I've got here is a multimeter. It's set to measure the resistance. And I'm going to be looking at four different components, starting with this one, the thermistor. Second of all, the LDR, which is light dependent resistor. Then the switch, which looks like so. And last but not least, a variable resistor. What I'll then do is I'll place the components into a voltage divider circuit. And I'll also be looking at this component in the voltage divider, a capacitor. So let's start with the thermistor. Now, the type of thermistor we're interested in is this type here, which is an NTC. That stands for negative temperature coefficient. And at the moment, its resistance is just over 13,000 ohms. If I was to heat that up by placing my finger over it, you can see its resistance is decreasing. So as the temperature increases, its resistance decreases. If I do the opposite, if I take my finger off of it, its resistance starts to increase again. So there you go, that's the thermistor. Temperature up, resistance down. Second of all, the LDR, the light dependent resistor. And once it's in, it has a resistance at the moment just over 2000 ohms. If I place my finger, that's or place the finger over it, that's going to make it darker. In fact, it's now gone above 20,000 ohms. 26,000. I'll take my finger off, change the setting again to measure more accurately. And if I take this light source and shine the light onto the LDR, you can see that as the light level increases, its resistance decreases. So as light goes up, resistance goes down. Third of all, the switch. So this is obviously, if I'm not pressing it, it's an open switch. I'm going to change the setting of this meter to measure anything up to 200 million ohms. And this is actually showing that the, the resistance is off scale. So the resistance is greater than 200 million ohms. Basically an open switch has a very, very large resistance. We can take that to be infinite. So an open switch, very large resistance. I'll change the setting again just to measure kilo ohms because when I close the switch, it's measuring zero. So a closed switch has a very, very small resistance. An open switch, a very large resistance. We can take the closed switch to be a resistance of zero, an open switch, an infinite resistance. Finally, we'll look at the variable resistor. So if I place that in here, there we go. It's measuring, it's in kilo ohms, remember the setting. So it's measuring about 110 ohms at the moment. I've turned this all the way around. In fact, it's actually measuring the resistance of this. There's a fixed value resistor in series with the variable resistor. This has a resistance roughly 100 ohms. So if I'm turning the variable resistor clockwise, then what's happening is its resistance is increasing. It's a 22K variable resistor, so it should be that as I turn this round, its resistance should increase to roughly, well, that's it there at the end, roughly 22,000. In fact, it's 19,000. As I turn in the opposite direction, obviously, its resistance is going to decrease. So that was step number one. Step number two is to look at these four components as well as the capacitor inside the voltage divider circuit. Okay, this is part two of the video. What I've got here is a voltage divider board. So in fact, this is a series circuit. Battery connector here, and variable resistor at the top, thermistor at the bottom. So a series circuit with two resistors. I also have these two voltmeters. Uh, this one here is measuring the voltage across the thermistor. This one here is actually measuring the voltage across the top component, the variable resistor. Now remember we said about the thermistor in the last video, if I was to heat that up, its resistance would decrease. In fact, if I do that now, place my finger over it, its resistance is going to decrease. And because its resistance is decreasing, you can see here that the voltage across the thermistor is decreasing. And therefore, as the voltage across the thermistor decreases, the voltage across this top component, the variable resistor, is increasing. The important thing is it increased even though I didn't change its resistance. Now what I'm going to do, in fact, is I'm going to switch 
the two components. Hopefully give the thermistor enough time to cool down slightly. So if I place the variable resistor at the bottom here and the thermistor at the top, there we have it. Again, what should happen is if I place my finger over the thermistor, its resistance decreases and you can see the voltage across it is decreasing and the voltage across the variable resistor because the voltage across the thermistor is decreasing the voltage across the variable resistor is increasing because of course these two voltages should add up to the supply voltage if I take my finger off of the thermistor then its resistance increases and the voltage across it increases which means of course the voltage here across the variable resistor has to decrease now let's try the second component, the LDR, light dependent resistor. In fact again I'll place that variable resistor at the top, place the LDR, LDR here. Now what I could do is I could decrease the resistance of this variable resistor just to make the, the two voltages roughly the same, it doesn't need to be exact. Oops, there we go, that's close enough. Now remember we said about the LDR, when we're adding light to it, its resistance goes down. So in fact if I take this light source again, if I aim this light source onto the LDR, then what's going to happen is its resistance decreases and because its resistance decreases, the voltage across the LDR, which is this voltage here at the bottom, there, is decreasing. And the voltage of course across the variable resistor is increasing. Do that again. So when I shine a light on the LDR, the resistance of it decreases, the voltage across it decreases, and therefore the voltage across this, the top component, has to increase. Because again, these two voltages have to add up to the supply voltage. And then notice again, when I was shining the light on the LDR, I wasn't changing the, the resistance of this variable resistor its voltage was changing but without actually changing its resistance if it's made darker, let's say I take that away if I place my finger over the LDR of course it'll get darker, its resistance then increases and of course the voltage across it increases and the voltage across the variable resistor decreases I could again switch the two components same thing will happen of course so variable resistor at the bottom, LDR at the top, and if I was to place my thumb over the LDR, its resistance increases, of course the voltage across it increases, voltage across the variable resistor is decreasing. Take the light source again, shine it on the LDR, and of course its resistance is decreasing in the light, voltage across it decreases, voltage across the variable resistor increases. Get rid of this and then we'll try the switch. We'll place the switch at the bottom now. Variable resistor at the top. Now, remember we said about the open switch, it had an, a very, very large resistance. Basically, we could take that to be infinite. With this switch now open, obviously an open switch with a very large resistance almost infinity that's going to be much larger than this resistance here so it's no surprise of course that this gets the full supply voltage across it remember from the first video voltage dividers one the larger the resistance the greater the voltage across the component so if this has an infinite resistance obviously that's much much larger than this resistance so it gets the full 5.54 in this case the full supply voltage across it if I close the switch, remember it should have zero resistance, so it's no surprise that the voltage across the switch now drops to zero. And we get the full supply voltage across the variable resistor. Now you will notice, of course, this voltage here is not the same as the voltage we get here. It's not until we learn in fifth year physics about internal resistance that we learn exactly why that's happening. Anyway. As I said, open switch has an infinite resistance and of course it's getting the full supply voltage across it. Close the switch 
and it has zero resistance so it'll have zero volts across it. Obviously, same thing would happen if I was to switch the two components. So place the variable resistor at the bottom, switch at the top, and there we have it. So the full supply voltage across the switch again when it's open has an infinite resistance. Close the switch and we get zero volts across the switch, the full supply voltage across the variable resistor. Now last but not least, we have the capacitor. So I'm going to place it in the circuit now with the variable resistor. And now you can see this voltage is changing in fact that's because the capacitor is charging. And what I want to do is actually discharge the capacitor. And I'm discharging it by placing a wire across it like so. So if I place a wire across a capacitor it's discharged and when the capacitor is discharged the voltage across it is zero. What I'll then do is take this wire out and the capacitor will start to charge and the voltage across it will increase. So if I do that now, and in fact it does, and in fact what's going to happen is this voltage is going to increase until it reaches the supply voltage. So that's important to remember that the voltage across a capacitor increases as it charges and it increases until this reaches the supply voltage. If this voltage across the capacitor is increasing of course then the voltage across the variable resistor has to then decrease because as I said before these two voltages add up to the supply voltage. And I'm not going to wait until it's completely charged. So I'm going to discharge it again. What I'll do is I'll decrease the value of the variable resistor. Now if I pull out this wire, the capacitor again will start to charge and the voltage across it will start to increase. But of course I've decreased the value of the variable resistor. So let's see if this is going to charge in a different time. In fact, there it goes. It's now fully charged. I've got the full supply voltage across the capacitor zero volts across the variable resistor. So as I decrease this resistance, the capacitor is actually charging in a, a shorter time. Now, again, I'm going to switch the two components, like so. We'll place the variable resistor at the bottom, and we'll place the capacitor at the top. Now, this wire, of course, will have to go here now, across the capacitor, Let's move that so you can actually see the voltage. There we go. And again, because the capacitor is discharged, we have zero volts across it. And we have the full supply voltage across the variable resistor. If I was to take out this wire, then hopefully we'll see this voltage increasing as the capacitor charges. And there we have it. So it's fully charged. Remember, of course, there is another video on the capacitor and I'll talk about more, or in more detail about how the value of the capacitance and resistance affects the time to charge. So remember to watch that one. But for now, that's us.